Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Olian and we're going to look at how to create a super nice, fat and wide synth bass sound. Um, the bass sound actually comes from a track called Love is a Bitch by Two Feet. And the sound, well, the tutorial is kind of the, uh, requested by Hanifi in the comment sections of another video. So thanks for participating and big shout out to you. Um, I hope this is going to be helpful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the creation of this. Um, well, I'm going to show you the bass sound real quick. One, I'm going to show you a short part of the original song, then I'm going to play the bass sound over it and then just show the bass sound on its own so you can kind of get an idea of what we're going to be working on. And then um, I'm going to go real quick over just like run over the, the stuff and like the setup of the of the preset of the space um, so you get an idea and then for those of you who are interested to stick around and learn a bunch of stuff about synthesis and um, go into detail about some of these features we're using um, yeah I'm gonna go into depth about that um, so let's jump right in and actually listen to the sound real quick so this is the bass sound we're gonna be working on um, playing my version over that sounds like this. <clears throat> so yeah, this is the bass sound. Okay, and here's how you make it. Basically, you just need one oscillator with a sawtooth wave, then throw a filter on top. Um, I don't actually know right now around how, what frequency, but you can kind of figure that out comparing it to the original. So throwing a filter on top with a filter slope of 12 dB per octave, um, adding a bit of drive, feedback, and then, um, kind of have to yeah fine tune the the envelopes which both of them are not doing that much or not that complicated but that's kind of the setup from the synthesizer point of view then you're going to have to add some chorus for which i used um, a free plugin called tal chorus lx which is kind of a modeling after juno 60 chorus um, module and then some reverb on top because it kind of sounded spacious and stuff in the original track. Um, for the synthesizer I decided to use Helm. Usually I like to use Silent to uh, show some stuff because it's also very simple and straightforward but it doesn't have a feedback feature and you need a feedback feature to give it this nice, nice like boosted bass like in your face heavy sound. Um, so Helm is also free. I'm going to put the link to all these free plugins in the description. Um, and if you just want to pause the video and get Helm and then play along, um, it's also cool. But if your other synthesizer has a feedback feature, feel also free, of course, to recreate it in there. It should be very simple to do it and um, good practice to kind of understand your synthesizer a little bit better. So that was the quick explanation. Now let's really go into detail. And the video is going to go a bit longer because I'm going to drop a lot of knowledge on you which um, is going to help you create your own presets, understand sound better, all this kinds of stuff. So I'm going to explain everything in detail because that's just the way I like to do stuff. And um, yeah, if you like the way I do things, obviously feel free to like, so like, subscribe, comment, this kind of stuff. It really motivates me to make more videos and um, yeah, it makes me happy. So. <laughs> If you do want to do something nice for me, feel free to subscribe and um, I'm going to see that little uh, red number on the bell on YouTube and be like, oh, I have a new subscriber, which always uh, is a very nice feeling for me. And if you don't, obviously, it's also not a problem because I don't even subscribe to all the channels I watch. But yeah, no motivation for me is good. More videos for you. Yeah. So let's jump in. Um, how do I start out? So he asked me to 
to create this base patch and obviously I didn't know exactly like from scratch okay oh, okay you do it like this um, I also had to do a bit of um, trying and figuring out so usually how I start is I listen to the sound itself and it usually gives me a bunch of details which I can use to get started on the sound and from using synthesizers um, quite a lot I can recognize a sawtooth wave pretty easily and if you make your own presets and play around with synthesizers for a while you're also going to be able to recognize sawtooth waves, square waves, sine waves, obviously. And um, it's just something that just happens because you just under, you just recognize the sound and it's not that difficult. So that's something that comes over time. Um, another way that you can sometimes um, get a starting point and, and an idea of um, what's a waveform or what kind of synthesizer you should use is just looking at the waveform. Um, it's a bit tricky and you kind of have to understand sound and listen to the the track to interpret the waveform properly. But um, maybe we can just do that for a quick practice real quick. Um, so basically this is the part where the bass comes in and you can, if you listen, you can tell there is a kick drum and, and more advanced is that the kick drum obviously gets some space because the ba the bass sound is kind of being compressed with a side chain um, or side chains with the kick drum so the kick comes through and then the bass comes in afterwards so you kind of hear the kick drum properly and but then the bass already comes in so this beginning part which you see here is the bass drum and usually big and long waveforms are bass because bass is quieter or not quieter bass isn't as easy to hear for us humans as mid and high frequencies so usually to get a impression of a balanced track the bass has more energy in it than the other frequencies so usually the the stuff which makes the waveform big are the kick drums and the bass sounds and this kind of stuff and yeah low frequencies have a longer wavelength so they also give you the are like if you're looking for the lower frequencies they are the more bigger picture movements and all these small movements over here are higher frequencies and mid frequencies. So this is the kick, which is kind of a distorted sine wave, which gives it a kind of a square wave feel almost. And then the bass comes in. And then you see a bunch of stuff happening here. But trend wise, if you look at this, if you were to draw a trend line, you can tell it's going up and then going straight down and then going up and then going straight down, which is the basic shape of a sawtooth. And then there's some stuff happening in between and we're going to have to decide, okay, is this another sawtooth wave which is layered in, this, in the preset itself, which would be two octaves higher <laughs> because you can tell that while this one cycle is happening for the sawtooth wave, four cycles, one, two, three, four cycles of the other sawtooth wave are happening, which would mean since you, an octave you double the, the wavelength, you would get, um, well, two octaves higher basically, because you double it and you double it, so you have four cycles while the other one has just one cycle. Um, but I decided that that's not actually in the preset itself, that's actually the guitars in this kind of stuff that are playing over the sound. Maybe that's not exactly correct, but I made the judgment call here. And guitars usually also have a kind of a saw guitars, bass, they also have a kind of a sawtooth kind of uh, wave shape um, because that's how strings work when you pull them, which I might actually make a video about um, soon. Anyway, wow, this video is going to be long, but I hope it's informative. Let me know in the comments if it is. If it isn't, then I'm going to make shorter videos in the future. Yeah, so let's jump in. We have the, or jump back in, we have the sawtooth wave and um, Let's take off the filter, take off the drive, take off the feedback. And this is what we have here. Actually, let me also take off the chorus and the, the reverb. So, okay, now we have this super long release time, which I put, which I'm also gonna talk about in a second. Let's take that off. So this is a, the sawtooth wave that we have right now. And we want to get rid of the high frequencies and 
put the filter cutoff around here. I don't know exactly what that is in Hertz. Actually, we could give that a quick look. So just so you guys on your other synthesizers. Well, let's just say on your cutoff thing, it's going to be around the middle. So I guess if it's gone from 20 Hertz to 20 K should be uh, what's the middle there. That's complicated. I don't know. Maybe around 1K, something like that. I don't know, you're gonna have to try that out. But here it's around the middle. So if you have a cutoff knob, turn it to the middle, more or less. <clears throat> it just sounds like this. Hey, I don't hear anything. <laughs> what is happening? Here we go. So, this is our starting point. Then you give uh, the sound a closer listen and decide how is it moving over time. Is it percussive and short? Is it like long and sustaining? And then on top of that, what's happening to the frequencies of the sound over time? Is it bright in the beginning and then it gets dull? Or is it the same more or less the whole time? And I decided, okay, it's a very stable sustaining sound from an amplitude, but also frequency perspective. So, we're gonna have a pretty steady filter, which is not moving much. And we're gonna have a pretty steady amp envelope as well. But we're gonna go over that in a second because there is some automation in there, which is cool. Then we can also decide, is there some more movement like an LFO or something? And there is quite some movement within the sound, but it's not coming from an LFO, it's coming from the chorus because that also adds movement. and. So we're not going to do anything with the LFO here. Okay. So sustaining envelope. I'm not going to go over envelopes too much, but just put the sustain up all the way for your amplitude envelope. Give it a bit of attack so you don't get a click and give it a bit of uh, release time so that it nicely releases when you take off your finger of the key. So set up the, a similar thing for the filter envelope, but just bring down the sustain a bit and give it a high decay time. Um, because what this does is it's just giving it a slight shape instead of just having a sausage. It gets, it takes a bit of time till it gets louder. Like it's pretty quick though, but that's kind of usually takes a second for a sound to develop. And then it's loud in the beginning and then gets a bit quieter. That's just, it makes it sound slightly more natural than just having the sausage in there. And I found that cool for the sound. So yeah, bring the sustain level a bit down in order for the decay time to be able to do its thing. Um, so now we're actually going to go into making the sound, giving the sound a bit of character. And in order to make it fatter and more in your face, we're going to use some feedback. What feedback does is it makes a feedback loop so that once you send the signal to the filter and uh, through the filter and you filter it, it sends it back in and does that basically infinitively. And um, that's kind of the technical point of view. But what happens is that you get a bass boost and, um, and make it kind of thicker and more in your face because it kind of shape, it, it does many things. It kind of changes the, the filter, um, the filter slope because obviously the point where you're filtering is going to be most affected because it's getting filtered and filtered again, while the stuff which is below your filter cutoff frequency is not being as much affected and just being fed in, it's going to give it a bass boost. And that's why it's giving it like this oomph and this, um, this weight. Be aware that if I now uh, turn off this amount over here and turn it up, it's going to make the sound louder. So don't be like, oh my God, this is amazing. It sounds crazy much better now. It's, it's also turning it up, but we don't want to do a long ear training session here. So if you want to really understand the difference between like if you add the feedback and if you don't have it, um, you're going to have to jump in and then maybe make two channels with two synthesizers and then turn one of them, turn the volume down and turn the feedback up in order to kind of get an idea of what it sounds like if you compare it at the same volume. But here we're just going to add the amount. Took some of the release because it was annoying me. The cool thing in Helm is you have a oscilloscope up here and um, it shows you how the waveform changes when you do certain things. And I think that's super helpful 
obviously you're supposed to use your ears but it makes you understand what's happening to the sound and here we see we kind of have this very flat sawtooth wave shape and when we add feedback we're actually giving it somewhat of a curve so feedback in a way is also distortion because we're distorting the shape of the waveform and um, that's going to kind of uh, affect the frequency content that um, we have in the waveforms so in this case if we push it up even more we see we're going closer and closer to a sawtooth uh, to to a square wave if you know the difference between a square wave and a sawtooth wave, you know that sawtooth waves has um, your fundamental and then all your harmonics, while a square wave only has odd harmonics. So it actually has less frequency content in a way, less frequencies um, and different ones. So if you move closer from a sawtooth wave to a square wave, you're actually going to bring down some of the harmonics in your signal. Um, so you're kind of cha changing the basic building block which you're using for the sound. So that's obviously distortion because we're distorting the signal into something else, but it's not just harmonic distortion or warmth or something, what so many people say when they use this feedback and drive and this kind of stuff. Distortion doesn't always mean you're adding more frequency. Sometimes it even means you're taking some frequencies and harmonic content away because you're distorting it into something which has different frequency content. So while you might turn, uh, when you turn a sawtooth wave more into a square wave, you're taking frequencies away. But when you have a sine wave, which just has one frequency and make it more like a square wave, you're adding harmonics. So be careful with like harmonics and distortion and drive and this kind of stuff, because we're going to go over the drive in a second. Drive doesn't necessarily add harmonics. Sometimes it might even take them away if you distort uh, a sawtooth wave, for example. That's at least what I found. Maybe that's also wrong, but just don't just take people for their word and kind of experiment and see what happens. Because if we now actually add some drive to add some character, we're gonna take a like we're gonna get closer to a square wave, and we're gonna take like bring down some of the harmonics and change the overall sound of the thing, which is gonna give it, give it character. Like character is a word which is very uh, subjective i guess not subjective but it's a word that, which could ma mean many things and in, in my case when i say character we're adding character is we have a very generic waveform which is a very simple and almost too perfect shape um and we change it into something which is slightly different and which is more in well individualized and also less perfect and usually sounds in the real world aren't that perfect and just have like these harmonics all at the same amplitude so it's going to make it sound more natural as well to kind of give it changes, you know, to make kind of change it. And with drive, the same thing is that the louder the signal is, the more the drive is going to distort the waveform, which then also will have kind of a harmonic effect over time in a way, because once it gets quieter and the waveform is less distorted, then um, the frequency content changes over time. And that's also something that makes stuff sound very natural if you manage to make sounds less static because if there's some movement in there it's going to sound natural because there's a lot of movement and sound in the real world and we usually listen to the real world um so it's just well i don't want to say like hey you always have to make this stuff sound more natural but understanding that if you feel like hey this sounds so generic then you can make it sound more natural if you don't want to do it you can also avoid using that because then you well now you understand how it works let's put it that way so let's add some drive we can see that if i take away the drive it's a similar effect to the um, feedback that if we push drive it gets closer to a sort uh, to a square wave you see it? up here so we can work with this it sounds nice and fat obviously it's also louder but Cool. So um, let's talk about the uh, envelopes real quick. Envelopes are kind of to shape the sound and this kind of stuff. In this track, I felt like there was more automation going on than actual envelopes because you had like the bass, which was then decaying over time, almost like you had a lot of release on uh, the filter as well as the amplitude, which would sound like this. 
and then have it like this boom boom but before um, the next bass sound comes in this track it usually comes up a bit like it's almost like sweeping into the next sound and you're not necessarily well if you're if you know your way around your synthesizer you might be able to set it up with envelopes and lfos but you might also just screw the envelopes and lfos and um, just automate it or even get a controller and control the volume or something like that and then record it so um I'm going to leave that up to you and not make a decision here because we're doing this out of context, obviously. But for your track, if you listen to the original, then um, you're going to see that that's kind of what happens. And if you have an envelope and it's down there, bringing it up, it's difficult because it's like a one time thing in a way. How do I? Ah, you wanted to use span. I wanted to get span and now it says spank. Funny. Anyway. <clears throat> So we're kind of all set with the synthesizer for now. Now let's jump to the chorus, um, tile chorus. It's a kind of like a nice old school chorus modeled after Juno 60. And um, it's a free plugin, which I'm gonna link to in the description. The reason I used it is that I am not a chorus expert and um, not that I'm an expert in anything, but I don't know much about choruses. So fine tuning, um, a chorus to make it sound the way I want is something that I'm not capable of doing yet. Um, and I checked different presets from the from the Ableton chorus, and I wasn't really happy. They weren't really doing what I want, what the original track sounded like or whatever. And um, so I went for this one. And I mean, it just has two buttons where you can choose two different chorus modes and you can also combine them. So you have kind of three different presets. And I felt like this combination of these two sounded kind of interesting and cool and even a bit close to the uh, to the bass sound in the two feet track. Um, so that's what I did. And let's compare it real quick. Okay, I'm clipping here, so I'm going to bring down the volume a bit. It adds width and it makes it sound like add some movement as well. And here you can uh, decide how much stereo width you actually want to add depending on yeah how you want to mix the track because obviously it might not sound that good in mono but that's a totally different topic I don't want to open right now. So you can use this chorus to make things nice and then it sounded like this huge space and obviously if you make want to make something sound even bigger and give it space you just add some reverb to basically mimic some big space so i went for a large hall uh, preset and then just turned down the dry wet um, a bit of eqing here and that's it you can also fine tune that for yourself much better than i can hear right now And that's basically it. I hope you learned a lot and that was helpful for you. Leave a like and subscribe if you like it and if you want to support me and motivate me to make more videos. Um, if you have any questions, obviously feel free to leave them in the comment section. And um, if you have anything else or improvements or feedback, feel free to leave that in the comment section as well. Um, yeah, and I hope to see you around for some other videos. Peace.